In this lesson, we're going to be looking at elastic and inelastic collisions in one dimension. So we're just going to continue off of last one, except we're going to say whether or not these one dimension collisions are elastic or inelastic. So what does that mean? Well, when objects collide, they sometimes deform, make a sound, give off a light, or heat up a little at the moment of impact. Any of these observations indicate that kinetic energy of the system before the collision is not the same as after the collision. However, the total energy must be constant because if we remember from Physics 20, we learned about the law of conservation of energy which states that the total energy of an isolated system remains at constant. So, the energy may change into several different forms, but it is neither lost nor gained, and there is no exceptions to this. So then what is an inelastic or elastic collision? Well, in order to understand the difference between an elastic or an inelastic collision, we are going to have to look at it through the view of energy. Because if we look at it, both elastic and inelastic, our momentum is conserved. So we still will do momentum to try and figure out sometimes velocity in some calculations, and then once we figure out those velocities, we'll use that to figure out if it is an elastic or inelastic. You'll see later. So that's the main idea. An elastic collision is where kinetic energy is conserved, meaning the kinetic energy before is equal to the kinetic energy after. An inelastic collision is when kinetic energy is not conserved, meaning the kinetic energy before is not equal to the kinetic energy afterwards. So some of our energy got lost in either heat, friction, or some other type of light or sound energy. So now let's see if you could identify any elastic and elastic collisions. So first we have these billiard balls. Now we have two billiard balls hitting. Are those going to be elastic or inelastic? I want you to think about that. Look at the rules that you've learned for an elastic and inelastic. Then I want you to look at my next picture of a tennis ball being hit with a racket. Is that an elastic or inelastic? I want you to pause the video and take a couple minutes to see if you can figure out which is which and be able to explain why. Okay, welcome back. So there are some aspects here for each of these on why you could say they are both inelastic. Elastic collisions are actually extremely difficult to have. So the first one, when billiard balls hit, there may not be any deformation to make it inelastic, but there is a sound. So we are losing some energy due to sound. Then I look at the tennis ball. Now the tennis ball is interesting. The tennis ball is squishing. It's being deformed. So there we're going to have some type of inelasticity as well. Let's see what Alberta Ed says. So what do we need to know about elastic and inelastic equations for this class? So what is our main goal today? Well, our main goal is we must be able to define, compare, and contrast elastic and inelastic collisions using quantitative examples in terms of the conservation of kinetic energy. So let's take a look at our first example of billiard balls and see if it's elastic or inelastic. So example one, we have a 0 0.0. 16 kilogram billiard ball traveling at 0.5 meters per second north strikes a stationary snooker ball and rebounds at 0.023 meters per second south. The snooker ball moves off at 0.465 meters per second north. Ignore any possible rotational effects of the ball. So we're just saying it's a straight hit. Determine the collision of a uh, determine if the collision is elastic. So let's take a look at our hint here. So first things first, let's draw a diagram. And our diagram is going to look something like that. Okay, now we know that in order for something to be elastic, our kinetic energy must not change. So we must conserve kinetic energy, must not lose any energy to any other forms of energy. So let's try this out. So I know my initial kinetic energy must be equal to my final kinetic energy. So now we have to look at my kinetic energies of both balls beforehand, the snooker ball and the billiard ball. And then we have to look at the kinetic energies of both balls after, both for the snooker ball and the billiard ball. 
Now from this, I know that my initial snooker ball is not moving, so I could just cross that off. So now let's plug in and see if my kinetic energies in both situations before and after are equal. So now when I calculate these, I'm going to end up getting 0 0.0200 joules on my initial and 0 0.0195 joules for my final, which is not equal. And therefore, it is inelastic. And we must lose some energy to sound or heat or something else. So now here are two questions for you to try on your own. So pause the video and see if you can get these questions right. When you unpause the video, I'll pull out the answers. Welcome back, and here are the answers. So A is inelastic, and B turns out to be elastic. So have you ever tried to figure out how they figure out what is exactly the speed of a bullet coming from a gun, and how they determine how fast bullets come from certain guns? Well, here's an interesting way of doing so. It is a very special type of inelastic collision called a ballistic pendulum. So basically what happens here, bullets are fired into the block of wood, which causes the bullet and the block combination to move. With this data, we are capable of calculating the speeds of the bullets. So how does this work? We are going to be looking at two types of energy here. So if we know the height of the bullet and the block combination, we could use our potential energy is equal to kinetic energy to find and calculate the speed of the bullet and the block combination must have to be moving initially. So generally, what we're saying is potential energy is equal to kinetic energy. So mgh, mass times gravity times height, is equal to half of the mass times velocity squared, where the mass is the mass of the bullet and the mass of the block. So once we have that up, step two, we can now use the ideas of conservation of momentum to find out the speed of the bullet. So once I know the speed of our block moving with the bullet in it, then we use the momentum of that, what must be the momentum of that, equal to the momentum of this whole system beforehand, where the block's not moving, so we're able to find the speed of the bullet. So let's see how that works with an example. So let's take a look at one of these ballistics examples. So here I have a small mass of a bullet from a pistol strikes a two kilogram ballistic pendulum. Upon impact, the pendulum swings forward and rises to a height of 0 0.219 meters. What is the velocity of the bullet immediately before the impact? So first thing I must do, if remember, my step one is we must find the velocity of this brick and what it's moving at. And to do that, we're going to convert potential energy to kinetic energy. So then basically to find the velocity, what we want to do is make our kinetic energy of this pendulum system equal to the potential energy. See how high it goes before it slides back down. So we know that EP or EK is equal to EP. Okay. Now we know kinetic energy is one half mass of the whole system times velocity squared. And our potential energy is equal to the mass of the bullet plus pendulum multiplied by the gravity multiplied by the change in height. So now what we're trying to solve for this is we're going to try and solve for v squared. So let's isolate for v squared. But before we do that, I look at this. My masses on both sides are the same, so they could cancel each other out. So if I divide both sides by the masses, they'll just cancel out. So let's continue to solve. So now we're going to square root both sides. And now what we're going to do is we're just going to plug in our numbers to see what we get. So now when I plug this into my calculator, what I'm going to end up getting is 2.073 meters per second. And in this case, it's going to be positive because we're going to say to the right. So now that I found the velocity of both the bullet and the pendulum together, I could use that to try and find the velocity of the bullet before it hits the block using conservation of momentum. So once again, we're going to use our before momentum must be equal to our final momentum. So our initial momentum must be equal to our final momentum. Now we know for my initial momentum, I have the block and the bullet separate. And for my final momentum, I have the block and the bullet combined in one, or the pendulum and the bullet combined in one. So, 
let's put these in here. Now, the first thing is I know my pendulum is not moving, so I could cancel out because that's just going to be equal to zero. So let's substitute in our formulas for momentum. Okay. So now we have this. We're trying to figure out what is my initial velocity of just the bullet. So we're going to isolate for that. Now we're just going to put in and substitute my variables to find my initial velocity. And when I calculate this, I'm going to end up getting 280 meters per second. And that's going to be towards the block. 